In this short video, we'll discuss the phosphorylation of different amino acids. We'll talk about which amino acids can be phosphorylated and what that ends up doing to their overall structure. Additionally, we'll also look at some practice problems and see how we can apply what we've learned to MCAT style questions. To get started, we'll use a mnemonic to remember which amino acids can be phosphorylated. For this, I think of yeast or YST. That represents the three amino acids that can be phosphorylated. And for some reason, yeast and phosphorylation are tied in my head. I don't really know why, but I've had a lot of students tell me that this is also the case for them. So what are these three amino acids? Well, we have tyrosine, serine, and threonine. Y is tyrosine, S is serine, and T is threonine. Why is it that these three amino acids are the only ones that we're going to see phosphorylated on the MCAT? Well, they all possess an OH molecule, and this OH is going to be the site of phosphorylation. So how does phosphorylation work and what bond is going to form? Ultimately, we're going to get a new PO bond. And the way this works is that the amino acid oxygen is going to attack the central phosphate on a phosphate group. This means that when an amino acid is phosphorylated, the OH group will be replaced by a phosphate, as we can see here with serine up top and threonine down on the bottom. When phosphorylation occurs, it changes the property of these amino acids. This occurs because a phosphate group carries a negative charge and it converts these previously uncharged amino acids into essentially charged amino acids. At this point in time, they're going to mimic things like aspartic acid and glutamic acid. This is important because aspartic acid and glutamic acid can also be thought of as phosphomimetic or mimicking a phosphorylated amino acid residue. We'll see the importance of this when we look at some questions, which is what we're going to do next. Now that we've learned about phosphorylation of amino acids, let's go ahead and apply our knowledge to some MCAT style questions. This first question asks, how many phosphorylation sites does the peptide MYIDSY contain? So remember our mnemonic for this is yeast or YST. So only the YST amino acids are gonna be phosphorylation sites. So we have a Y, an S, and another Y. So overall, this is gonna contain three total phosphorylation sites. Let's look at another question. This one asks, which of the following peptide sequences will behave most similarly to a fully phosphorylated version of the aspartate, histine, tyrosine, asparginine, serine peptide? To begin with, we want to go ahead and identify the phosphorylation sites. Remember, that's Y, S, T, or tyrosine, serine, and threonine. So here we can phosphorylate tyrosine as well as serine. In these particular cases, if we're doing a substitution, we either want tyrosine to stay as one of the YST molecules, or remember, these are going to, if phosphorylated, be equal to D or E. So another good answer choice would be if tyrosine and serine were substituted with either aspartic acid or glutamic acid. Now let's go ahead and shift our focus to our answer choices and see what's happening here. So in A here, we have the tyrosine being substituted with an isoleucine, well, that really isn't going to work. And then the serine is staying the same. That could still be phosphorylated. So overall, don't really love this answer, but we're going to give it a down vote because it might still be the best one. Let's go ahead and now look at B. When we transition to B, here we can see that the tyrosine has been substituted with a glutamic acid. And in this case, the serine has been substituted with a leucine molecule. Again, while the glutamic acid here is a good choice, the leucine molecule isn't super great. So we'll give this a down vote as well. Now let's move on to C. In C, we have the tyrosine molecule being replaced with an aspartic acid. And that's a pretty good substitution since it mimics the phosphorylated version of tyrosine. And then when we look at serine, it's now going to be a lysine molecule. Well, this isn't super great because they're going to be opposite in charge. Remember, if we were to phosphorylate serine, it would end up with a negative charge, but lysine or K is positively charged. So this is also going to get a down vote as well. This probably means that D is the correct answer, but let's just double check and make sure. So here we can see that the tyrosine molecule has been replaced with a glutamic acid. That's a great fit because it's going to mimic a phosphorylated tyrosine. And the same thing is also true of serine as well. In this case, that's a great fit since both of them are going to be replicating a phosphorylated version. Therefore, D is going to be the correct answer, and the rest of these answer choices would therefore have to be wrong. Let's look at one last question. This question asks, serine 113 phosphorylation is critical for the proper upregulation of GPAs. Which of the following amino acid substitutions will most likely result in GPAs downregulation? Before we jump into our answer choices, let's get a clear view of what this question is asking. Here it says that if we have a serine 113 and we phosphorylate it, then we're going to see the upregulation of this GPA molecule. The question is asking us to figure out what would result in GPAs downregulation. And this means that we want to probably get rid of the function of serine. This means a couple things. We don't want answers that are going to be Y, S, T, and we don't want an answer that's going to be either D or E or aspartic acid or glutamic acid because those are our phosphomimetic molecules. Any answer outside of these should go ahead and result in downregulation of GPAs because they can't be phosphorylated, nor do they mimic a phosphorylated residue. Now let's go ahead and look through our answer choices and figure out which answer is right. 
So first we have tyrosine or A. Now this is going to be wrong because it's one of our YST and that would mimic the ability that serine has to be phosphorylated. The same is also true of threonine. And for aspartic acid, it's a phosphomimetic, so that's also not going to work. Therefore, glutamine has to be the correct answer because it's the only amino acid that's present here that can't be phosphorylated, nor does it mimic a phosphorylated amino acid. If you liked this video and found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with anybody else who might be taking the MCAT.